Hi everyone, I'm Robert Curtis. I'm the head instructor of the Distance Calculus program. In this video, I'm going to talk about our program Distance Calculus and how it compares to some other options for taking calculus, either in a classroom or there are lots of online calculus courses available these days around the internet. But most of those are actually structured very similar to classroom courses and I call all of them traditional courses. And I want to compare those traditional courses against our distance calculus program which is very non-traditional and has been for the last 20 years. The goal of this video is to try to help you answer the question, is distance calculus right for you? Maybe it is and maybe it isn't. Let's find out. The guiding principle to all of these traditional courses is the idea of being synchronous. Synchronous is something that almost all of education is really based upon, starting way back in kindergarten and going through grammar school and high school. The idea that a whole class has to go through all of the material at the same pace at the same time. Well, it is an economical way of teaching the class. That's kind of for sure because you have one teacher and lots of students and they all follow along. And when you get to college, if you have a huge lecture hall, then it is very economical for the college to operate courses like that. But it's not necessarily the best way to learn, especially if you're a non-traditional student. Synchronous courses are structured uh, for a classroom where you have a fixed schedule that you go to calculus on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m. and you stay there for an hour and you listen to the calculus lecture. Your homework's due on Fridays for 14 weeks and your final exam is on June 12th. I hope you can make it because if you can't, you don't pass the class. Those are extremely synchronous courses and for some students, synchronous is good. It keeps you going through the class. It gives you deadlines and a structure to help you with your self-discipline. But for many students, and I might be talking to you, who are in the non-traditional student area, you might have a job and a family and a car payment and a house payment and all kinds of things going on in your life where synchronous does not really mesh well with academic success. In contrast, distance calculus is based upon the idea of being asynchronous which means not synchronous at all. What does that mean? Well, to begin with, our courses start asynchronously. You can start your course today or tomorrow or next week or next month or on Thanksgiving. It doesn't matter. We enroll students throughout the academic year because we don't follow the traditional academic calendar. Traditional courses do start on very fixed dates. You have to start in the fall semester in September sometime or in the spring semester in January or the summer semester. It's very fixed start dates. Likewise, our courses end asynchronously. What does that mean? Does that mean you can start your class today and finish it tomorrow? No, that would be unreasonable. There is a lot of work in these distance calculus courses and there's no way to finish it in one day. But we do have many students finish these courses very, very fast. Fast means on the order of three weeks or four weeks or six weeks or eight weeks, that kind of time scale. There is another video on our website discussing about how fast you can go through the course and it is one of the main questions that students uh, who are investigating distance calculus ask. So I'll talk about how fast you can go in that other video. But it suffices to say that you can finish the course as quickly as your academic skills allow and it depends on how much time you can put into your course. So if you have a lot of time and very strong academic skills, then you can go much more quickly. On the other hand, there are many students, and I might be talking to you, who mathematics is not your favorite nor your strongest subject. You may have a lot of difficulty in math, and trying to keep up with a fixed schedule over here in the synchronous courses is very difficult and stressful for you. Trying to keep up with the homework 
And if you don't finish your homework by that Friday and you don't understand that topic, then you just go to the next topic and you didn't understand the first topic and now you have to do a second topic, you don't understand that. And then all of a sudden, we have a big problem. Our courses actually do not do anything like that as I'm gonna describe, but we have a slow path where you can actually finish the course up to one year from your date of enrollment. One year is a very generous amount of time to finish your course and many students really appreciate the fact that that stress of having to finish the course on a fixed timeline is not there. Many students actually who have lots of things going on in their lives will work on their course in distance calculus for a week or two weeks or three weeks and do a chunk of work and then they bow out for a little bit while they go deal with their kids who got sick and their job that heated up and whatever else might come in their lives and then they come back to the course when their time allows. So that's a very flexible way of going through, a very asynchronous way of going through the course and many students do like the fact that they have up to a year to finish their course. Now, over here you don't have that kind of flexibility. It's a very fixed, you finish your course when that final exam is scheduled. Likewise, as I described just before, the idea of, of not being ready for the next assignment because you didn't finish the previous assignment, that whole problem really comes up in terms of the idea of punitive grading. In these traditional courses, when you miss an assignment or you turn an assignment and you didn't understand much of it and you need more help with it, then you're graded down and you're told what you didn't understand and you might get a 62 or a B minus or something and the idea is that under punitive grading that that's somehow a motivation for you to do better on the next assignment so you don't get graded down. Well, I don't think that's a very positive way of going through a course. You're always under this threat of not doing as well. I don't really like that. Our courses are built on a completely different pedagogy which is called mastery learning. Mastery learning means that you work on an assignment until it is 100 percent correct. And that might mean that you work on an assignment and you hand it in and then you get it back with some comments, with some grades, with here you missed this problem, you need to work on this one some more, and then you turn it back in. We have the idea of doing recursive homework. That you keep turning your homework in over and over again until it is 100% correct. So there's no way to be punitive. You are going to do the entire assignment until it is 100% correct. And that's a very different way of going through a math class for many students. Certainly does not happen over here in the punitive area where you simply turn your homework in once and you get it back and then that's the end of the homework. So our homework is also asynchronous and there are no deadlines for our homework. You don't have to have your homework done by a certain date. Now many students do like deadlines for their homework and we have an option in our um, class accounts where we can turn on suggested due dates based upon your goal finishing date for your course. And that helps you keep on pace, what you should get done uh, by a certain date to try to help you, and some students like that. But there's no penalties if you're late um, because you're going to keep working on that assignment over and over again until it is 100% correct. Homework becomes the cornerstone of the communication between the student and the instructor. So the time that you spend in a classroom where you're listening to a lecture gets flipped, which is a popular term these days, that the time now you're going to be spending with the instructors in distance calculus is all about your homework. So you might say, well, how do I learn? The way you learn over here in distance calculus is by using video lectures. Video lectures, I think, are much more powerful than live lectures because you are in control of the video. If you already understand a subject and you don't need to go through it again, 
you can grab the little thumb and fast forward through the video. If you didn't understand something that is presented in the video and you need to go back and look at it again, you just pick up the thumb and go back in time. You can't do that in a classroom course. You can't raise your hand and say, uh, could you do that problem again and maybe a third time because it might take me a while to understand it. There's no way that's going to happen in most classroom courses. Likewise, our courses use computer technology very, very seriously. 80% of our courses use a computer algebra system. 80% of our classwork uses a computer algebra system. Now, in the lower courses, we use a program called Live Math, which is in between a graphing calculator, which you may have used in high school for some classes, and a higher program, which might be Mathematica or Maple, which is used in the higher courses. We use Live Math, which is kind of in between. It's easier to learn. It's easier to use not quite as powerful as those major research tools. Um, it's the right tool to use to learn the topics of beginning calculus and the related courses. 20% of our courses, 20% of our course work is paper-based courses, manual computations. And we feel that this is the right mix of technology and manual calculations. It's important that all students who are finishing a calculus course have a certain mathematical literacy of being able to do a reasonable set of calculations by hand. Uh, not one through 99 odd kinds of, uh, kinds of manual calculations that you find that are really prevalent over here in the traditional courses. I always dislike those kinds of assignments, one through 99 odd, and you just went, oh. 50 problems by hand. Ugh. Our courses are using computer technology to thoroughly investigate the topics of calculus much more thoroughly than you can do with just doing um, hand calculations. And this is, uh, this is quite um, different in using what's called these days as a reform curriculum. A reform curriculum is a modern curriculum. It's a curriculum that uh, tries to investigate uh, calculus topics much more thoroughly from a algebraic side, which is what you find in the traditional classroom courses, but also from a numerical side, from a graphical side, and also from a narrative side. So there's four ways of investigating mathematics in this kind of idea, and reform curriculum is built upon that. So we don't ignore technology, we embrace technology and we use it to investigate calculus even more thoroughly than you can just with algebraics. Now there are some traditional classroom courses that uh, their instructors don't even allow technology in the classroom. Like you might bring in a uh, graphing calculator with formulas in it and uh, you know your phone with formulas in it that you're supposed to memorize. Um, so there's actually some traditional classrooms that are very much geared that you're only going to do math that you can do with a piece of chalk or a pencil. If you like that kind of approach to mathematics, then you need to find a traditional course to take. Now, the online courses available these days uh, are generally uh, built upon the idea of multiple choice. Multiple choice is a very economical way of grading, right? You go on to a web page and it says do problem uh, 62 out of the textbook. And sometimes these online calculus courses, they just send you a paper textbook as, an, as part of the enrollment for the course. And you're supposed to sit and teach yourself calculus. So you open up the textbook, you do problem 62, you get some answer, and then you're supposed to enter into a multiple choice kind of relationship now with a web page where your answer does it match one of the four answers that they gave and oh uh, it's not in there or it is and you click on the box and if you get it wrong then it says oh you need to work on this again here's another problem just like it multiple choice is not a very effective learning tool 
it's an okay evaluation tool if you're taking the, SR, uh, the SATs or the GREs, but even those exams now have big narrative parts to them that are graded by humans and not graded just by computer and scanners. Our courses, and, I, and I'm going to take a minute to, to write this because I feel so strongly about it, is that none of our courses have any multiple choice in them at all. I don't believe in multiple choice as a learning tool. And all of the grading that occurs in our courses is done by humans. A lot of it by me, but the other instructors as well. The cornerstone of the distance calculus course is the communication of the homework with the student and the instructor, back and forth. That's the conversation that we're having in distance calculus about the topics of calculus and the idea of using mastery learning as a way of getting you to a positive 100% completion rate in the course material. Now, uh, does that mean that distance calculus is easier because you're always going to get 100% on every assignment? No, absolutely not. And in fact, in many ways, distance calculus is probably a little bit harder than these traditional courses. And if you're really good at these traditional courses and you're, you're successful in them, you probably want to stay over there and take another traditional course. If you're good at it, then you know, why not stay with, uh, with something that you're good at? But if you're not good at the traditional way of doing the courses, or you're bored with the traditional way of doing courses, and you want to try something new, well, distance calculus might be for you. Definitely, you're not going to be bored in this course. You're going to be challenged. There is a lot of work. And when you get done with the course, you are going to feel like you really took a calculus course, probably more than any of these traditional or online courses over here. Now, there's other videos on the website that talk about grades. The next question most students ask is, well, if I get 100% on every assignment, do I automatically get an A? No. We have a whole grading mechanism, and we try to accurately give grades that are based upon the knowledge that you've acquired in the course, not in terms of punitive or missed deadlines or any of that stuff. And I think we do pretty good. We do have a, a, a very good grade spread. We have lots of A's and lots of B's and lots of C's for various reasons. And I'll let the, um, the grading video talk about those grades. So it's not that you're automatically going to be getting an A, certainly not. And in fact, in many ways, this course is much more challenging for you than, uh, in, than in many of the traditional offerings. So you really need to think about that uh, aspect of the course and, and if you're ready for that kind of challenge. If you're not, then probably enrolling in distance calculus is not a good idea. But if the things that I've talked about here on the non-traditional side, if that's appealing to you, then I'm going to invite you to further research through the pages. Make sure that all of the aspects of this course seem to be good um, aspects for you. And then if you have any questions, please write me an email and I'll try to answer them as best as possible. Because when students enroll, I want to make sure that you really know what the course is about so that when you enroll, you're ready to do the course as we've designed it. And my goal is that you're academically successful in the course. All right, well, thank you for listening. And uh, like I said, if you have any questions, please write me an email, and I'll try to answer them as best as possible. And I look forward to seeing you in the course. We'll talk to you later.